All right, everyone, I want to take a minute to talk about using graphs and science just to make sure we're all on the right page. Some of you did fabulous on your uh, qualitative and quantitative graphing assignment. Some of you just need a little refresher on how we graph in science. So this is a really short video. There is going to be a graphing assignment homework that goes along with it. I'll give it to you in class so you don't have to print it out. Um, but just go ahead and go with that. So what's the point of graphs? Why is this important? And it's pretty much because we, we've, we've got all this data. We've done an experiment, and we need to analyze it. If it's a bunch of words on a paper, um, it, it's kind of hard to see the big picture. So we use graphs to make a big picture. So we can uh, see if there's trends, if we can predict how uh, things are going to turn out, if we can see if there's anomalous data or data that just doesn't make sense. So graphs display both categorical and numerical, da numerical data. Numerical data is pretty easy because it's got the word number in it. It's data that comes from measurement. So this is usually quantitative data, okay, things that we can measure. Categorical data, you guessed, are probably things um, uh, that we group into categories. A lot of times this is qualitative data, although Quantitative data can be considered categorical data. Let me give you an example. Um, if we took every name of students at Southwest and we could group them into how many students have the same name, we'd probably have a lot of Johns, but maybe uh, not a lot of Aidens, that kind of thing. All right, there's different kind of graphs. The one on your screen shows a double line graph. Um, Line graphs only display numerical data. Can you, that mean, can you use a line graph for qualitative data? And your answer right away should be no, because qualitative data is not numerical data. So we're going to use line graphs for quantitative data only. And they show how the dependent variable changes in response to the independent variable. So always, 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 you guys learn to uh, hopefully dry mix, um, but, you know, your independent variable always goes on the x-axis and the dependent variable always goes on the y. That never changes. So if we look at the graph on the screen, it shows bacterial growth in 300 minutes. What you can't see, what might be cut off from my video, is on the x-axis is time. Time, 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 always, always, always goes on the x-axis. I should never see time on the y-axis. Why? Time is what is changing. That's the independent variable. What depends on the amount of time is the dependent variable. So it shows on this graph, as time increases, um, the growth of bacteria increased as well. Second kind of graph is bar graphs. This is for both categorical and numerical data, meaning you can use bar graphs for both quantitative and qualitative data. So our graph here is pretty easy. Quantity of animals consumed by owls. So the different types, that's what's changing. Still, it still goes on the x-axis. What changes is the type of animal. Uh, what response to the type of animal is what, how, what the owls ate. And if you see, owls mostly eat rodents. All right, linear, nonlinear, this should be like a duh slide. Linear means straight line. You guys know that line, straight line. Nonlinear means it's not a straight line. Uh, hopefully in math you've learned of things called outliers. Outliers is a word called anomalous data. It's data that just doesn't fit the rest of our uh, what we found in our investigation. So a lot of the times we throw that anomalous data out. We have to report it, but we don't consider it when we're making our final judgments. So if we look at linear and nonlinear graphs, let's start with the one on the top left, temperature of heated water. That is a totally linear graph. That's a straight line. Hopefully you can see that. My independent variable, again, is time. What depends on that time, water temperature, it's a steady increase. As time increases of heating water, so does the water temperature increases. Now the one on the top right, that is a nonlinear graph. That should totally make sense to you. It's not a straight line. Okay, so it shows... Um, uh, maybe the extension that looks like a D, uh, D looks like it's maybe uh, distance um, and as distance increases uh, force uh, decreases so that should make sense to you too now if we look at the one on the bottom that shows an outlier and the outlier outlier is um, is in that is right here so that's your outlier that's the one that doesn't make sense. So usually with outliers, it's because something happened. We did something wrong in our experiment. We've maybe, um, you know, some variable has been messed with. 
Um, and so we do report it, we show it on the graph, but we really don't uh, take it into account when we make our final thing. Now, if you have outliers all over the place, your experiment probably isn't good and you might need to go back and redo it. And that's all I have for you. So when you're doing your graphs for the homework, be sure that you guys are taking special care to make sure if it's quantitative data, you're using either a line graph or a bar graph. If it's qualitative data, you're uh, only using bar graphs. And if you have any questions, see me in class.